Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Hello, people of Earth and the universe. Welcome to Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. I am your host, Keith, and today we will be talking about the return of Roseanne. Roseanne Barr's Iconic, legendary TV sitcom is back on television, and we will talk about the new TV series, Krypton, from the Sci-Fi Network, uh, which goes into the background of Superman's homeworld, Krypton. So yeah, TV is back in its golden age again with its writing, and I'm excited to talk to you about that today. Starting off with Roseanne. So it's been 21 years since we've seen Roseanne and John Goodman and Sarah Gilbert and the whole Connor family. And they're back. They pick up 21 years later, of course. And <laughs> where do we start? <laughs> so looks like uh, Darlene, who was played by Sarah Gilbert, uh, is moved back home with her mom and dad. She's now a single mother with two kids, one teenager and one preteen. Her oldest uh, child is her daughter named Harris, Harris Connor Healy, uh, who's played by Emma Kenny, And then her preteen son is Ames McNamara. His name is Mark Connor Healy. And Sarah has to adjust to life now, living back home with her parents. And uh, <laughs> you get to see uh, Roseanne and Dan just, uh, just the way you, you used to know them. I mean, that chemistry is still there with this TV show. It's excellent. It's um, it's very dry, witty, and funny. Uh, the two of them look great. Uh, it's just like I mean, they literally did pick up where they left off at. You, it's just you have that feeling when you watch the show. So, and then you find out uh, through this first episode, there's a two, it's a two episode arc yesterday. So, what you find out is that in, in this first episode, that uh, their son. You know, DJ, you know, he was uh, in the military, he just got out. Uh, so, and he is a, he's a dad, he's married, and he has a, a daughter. Her name is Mary Connor. She's played by Jade Ray. Uh, DJ is played by Michael Fishman, once again, you know, the son. <laughs> DJ Connor, Dan Jr., of course. So, DJ's wife is still serving in the military overseas. So, DJ is basically raising his daughter on his own right now until she comes back. So that's an interesting setup. And Jackie, <laughs> Roseanne's awesome, <laughs> crazy, funny sister, who uh, you find out through this episode, this first episode, that Roseanne and Jackie haven't talked in like over a year uh, since. <laughs> and it all boils down to the presidential election. <laughs> Roseanne is a... Uh, you know, Roseanne Connor is a pro Donald Trump supporter, so she voted for President Trump, and Jackie did not vote for him, and their falling out stems from this election. So it was really cool to watch that episode and see that because I'm pretty sure across this country there were a lot of families who were, who may have been divided with that election. Not getting into that, but it was just cool to see someone put that a, a comedic aspect on that, and. uh <laughs> The banter that goes back and forth between Jackie and Roseanne is just, it's just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, it, it was classic stuff. I, I really enjoyed watching the episode. It was fun to see them again. People don't realize that uh, back in the day in the 80s and in the 90s, when uh, the Bill Cosby TV show was number one in America, Roseanne's TV show was number two. Roseanne's show was basically the only comedy that rivaled the Cosby TV show. That was his competition, Roseanne Barr. Yes, if y'all didn't know, if you don't know, as they say, now you know. So that's why this TV show coming back is such a big deal because it was a part of everyone's lives in this country. You know, I, I mean, you couldn't wait to be home to watch 
you know, both of those TV shows because those were families that you could relate to for, you know, in just different ways. The dry humor, the just, uh, you know, people just living every day and trying to make it, just trying to, uh, to survive and, you know, going through their trials and tribulations and just still having a smile on their face and still having that love and that resilience that gets them to it. And then watching the banter between <laughs> Darlene <laughs> and Becky. <laughs> I didn't realize how much I missed that until I saw it again. You know, it, it was just, you know, just how sisters could fight, you know, siblings can fight, you know, and then of course, DJ just being the young boy in the family, the young son, he was just caught in the middle and he was just like, whatever. But this episode was fun to watch. Cause I said before, so you see that set up where, you know, Roseanne is feuding with Jackie and then Dar Darlene is trying to bring Jackie and Roseanne back together. She's trying to play mediator. And, uh, you know, it's not as easy as she thinks it's going to be. <laughs> and you see throughout this episode that uh, Roseanne has made it like a shrine to Jackie in the kitchen. <laughs> with the picture of her when she was a police officer. Uh <laughs> As if, you know, and then when Darlene says, well, you know, why do you have a, this shrine to, of Jackie in the kitchen like this? And Roseanne's like, well, because she's dead to me. But of course, you know, it's not going to stay that way. But it was just very interesting to see that uh, dynamic happen. The show, what's great about this TV show and what I was reminded of with this TV show is that even comedies have serious subject matter and issues. And the way the show was directed, it went from very funny and dark and witty to very serious. And it was very seamless. It was very, it was a great smooth transition to see. So, and the, the best part of this episode, or maybe the most intriguing part, um, is when Becky pops in <laughs> and, uh, She's played by Alicia Goinson, uh, Becky Connor. And when she pops in, she decides to tell her family that, hey, guess what? I'm going to have a baby. And then Roseanne's uh, reply is, you know, baby what? Like she, she doesn't, you know, take her literally. And you find out that, you know, Becky has agreed to be a surrogate because basically she needs the money and she's trying to survive. She wants to pay off her house and her credit cards and this is the route that she wants to take. And then as she says that, you know, everyone's like, oh, okay, well, that's nice. You know, who's it going to be? And they're thinking the surrogacy is going to be you having someone else's child, you know, you know, the husband and wife. And Becky's like, well, I need to take shots and get an exam so I can produce extra eggs. And Roseanne is like, well, what are you talking about? She's like, you're going to be using your eggs. And Becky's like, yeah, that's, you know, it's going to be, you know, I'm giving them my eggs. They, and she talks about how, you know, the mother who, the mother to be wants, you know, belie believes that Becky is 33 and Darlene makes this, this <laughs> jab and she says, is anyone going to talk about how, this, you know, she's like 50 years old. <laughs> and it was just a really funny remark when she said that, you know, just the way she said it. it it's just, when you watch this show, it's like. Yeah, like I said, it's just like you, you never left. It's just like, wow, I remember this so well. And Becky says, well, you know, the woman at the Mac counter says that I'm, you know, 30, I have the face of a 33 year old. And they just keep going back and forth. And Jackie, you know, Aunt Jackie chimes in and states that, you know, she's going to be supportive of Becky's decision. And if Becky needs help getting back and forth, you know, during her pregnancy, that she's there for her. And of course, Dan and, Ro Dan and Roseanne are looking at her like, why are you saying that? And they're looking at Becky like, what's wrong with you? Why would you do this? And, you know, there's a moment where, you know, Dan is throwing something away in the garbage and he just throws it down really hard in the kitchen. And he's just like, does anyone want to know what I think? And Jackie chimes in, well, it it's Becky's body. It's her choice, her decision. Isn't that right, Roseanne? And Roseanne reluctantly says, yes, that's true. And then Dan's just like, well, I'm going to go out in the garage. And, you know, it's just that, you know, the, the scene went from very funny to very serious to funny again, because, you know, Roseanne's like, well, let me wait till he has a few beers before I go talk to him. And then she waits like 
10 seconds she says okay and then she and then she must then, then she goes to talk to him so yeah it was just interesting to see that like i said it goes from funny to serious to funny and it does and it's all very organic so and it, you you realize why you missed this show and why it was so good are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Hey, welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast, and I am Keith. And we're just talking about the return of Roseanne. Her iconic TV show came back, and it just it was blazing in, in rare, great form. It's just it was great to watch. So we were just talking about how. You know, the show went from funny to serious to funny, and it did it in such a, a great way. It was blended and interwoven perfectly. So when Roseanne goes to talk to Dan in the garage about Becky's announcement about how she wants to be a surrogate and give away her eggs to somebody, you know, you know, Dan and Roseanne are like, that's, you know, that's going to be our grandchild. You know, you're selling off our grandchild. And Roseanne says to Dan, look, every time we tell Becky not to do something, what does she do? He goes, we told her not to get married. What did she do? And he's like, she got married. <laughs> you know, he's, and she's like, every time we tell her not to do something, she does the exact opposite. So at home, I'm watching this thinking, well, that just means you guys should just tell her, hey, go for it. If you want to have a different effect <laughs> on your daughter. So it was interesting to see that, um, that in the episode and watch what's going on with Becky and watching how her and Darlene still bicker with each other. At one point, Becky says to Darlene, hey, I might be doing this, but at least I'm not living at home with my parents. And Darlene states to her, well, I'm, he goes, you think I want to be here? She's like, I'm here taking care of them. You know, I'm here, I'm here making sure that, you know, they're taking their medicine and doing what they need to do. Roseanne overhears her. And once Becky leaves, Roseanne's like, well, you know, come on now. The truth is, uh, <laughs> you know, um, you lost your job. <laughs> Here's your mail. And Darlene's like, you open my mail? He goes, I never stopped. I mean, Roseanne says, Roseanne says, I never stopped. So, <laughs> so, you know, she sees that, you know, Darlene got her severance check. And then she goes, here's another one. I guess she ran a traffic light. <laughs> you know? So, oh, that was just funny to watch to, and, and to see you know, that chemistry again with the whole family and the different dynamics and seeing what's going on. Darlene is trying to adjust to raising her kids at home with her parents, you know, there at, for support. Becky is on her own. You find out in this episode that Becky has been widowed uh, and that she's just trying to survive. And, you know, she thinks this is what she needs to do. So, you know, how that's going to turn out is interesting. It's very, and by the way, Aunt Jackie, you know, we love her. Lori Metcalf plays Aunt Jackie. <laughs> oh man. She, you know, it's, everyone looks the same. You know, the kids look grown. It's just funny and weird seeing these kids. They're, they're all growing up now. And, uh, you know, and they're, you know, and two out of her four kids are, you know, our, our, our parents now. So her, you know, the son DJ and then, you know, Darlene, you know, they're both, you know, parents. So it's just, Watching that on the show is like, wow, time has passed by. It was like only yesterday I was watching the show. So now a big fuss and a big stink about this whole thing was like, so when the Roseanne show initially ended, what happened was we found out in the last episode that Dan was really supposed to be dead and that, you know, it was an alternate reality. And I believe Roseanne and the family won the lottery. So they explain that in the first episode when you see Roseanne and Dan in the garage and Dan's like, Hey, I found your script, you know, that you wrote. He goes, this is a great story. He said, the only problem is you killed off the, you know, uh, you know, the, the main character <laughs> and Roseanne is like, she hugs him and he says, uh, yeah, he was a charming fellow. So I guess that was a nod to that alternate reality that they had in the last episode where they had killed Dan, even though he was there for that whole season. 
So that was a nod and a wink to the fans that say, hey, this is how we're going to explain why Dan is still here, that that was an alternate, alternate reality and that Dan never really died, you know, after having a heart attack. So that was cool to see. I was very happy that they did that. Um, <laughs> the second episode is it gets even more interesting. It's called Dress to Impress. And it has to deal with Darlene's son, you know, Mark. Mark is a nice, sensitive kid. And it's going to be his first day in school. And Mark, you know, he, I guess he's gender fluid. He likes to, you know, wear like leotards and, you know, and he likes to wear uh, nail polish. You know, he doesn't necessarily wear the traditional male gender type clothes. And Dan, being the father and the patriarch of the kind of family, is like, well, I love my grandson. I'm just concerned that when he goes to school, he's going to get picked on. And Darlene's like, you know, he's not, you know, I'm not going to change him. I love him just the way he is. If that's what he wants to wear, then that's fine. So, you know, Dan expresses his concerns to Roseanne. Roseanne and Dan talk. And she's like, well, I hear you. So, you know, let me talk to him, see where, he, you know, where Mark's head's at. And Mark is a real bright, uh, cute kid. You like him. He's very lovable, very open. So Roseanne and, and Mark, her grandson, sit on the couch and she's like, so let me ask you a question, a serious question. And Mark's like, well, what's the question? He goes, uh, do you see yourself as a boy? And Mark's like, yeah. He goes, well, so you know you're wearing clothes that most boys don't wear. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And Mark is like, well, you know, these are clothes that make me feel good. I mean, you know, they're bright and happy. You know, it's, it's what I like to wear. But yeah, I consider myself a boy. So Mark is not tripping. <laughs> Mark is basically saying, all of you are tripping. You know, I know who I am. I'm just not going to conform to people's standards. And, you know, and it poses a good question, too, about, you know, children and what happens when they go to school. Because, you know, when you go to school, it's like, you know, I was taught that going to school, whether it's elementary, middle or high school, it's, it's going to mirror the world that you're, that you're in because of the different social class and the, hit the hierarchy, the different standings that the students have, who's popular from who's not. Very interesting and fascinating stuff, you know. Um, so. You know, they send Mark off to school and Roseanne takes him to school. And as she's getting ready to leave, you know, you know, they introduce Mark and one of the kids calls Mark a freak. And Roseanne asks to speak to the class. And she says, hey, this is my grandson. He's a great kid. You're going to love him. Um, you're going to want to play with him and everything and uh, just look at him. And as she gets ready to leave, she tells the kids that if anyone gives him trouble, you know, just know I'm a white witch. <laughs> So, you know, she's kind of, she was kind of, you know, friendly jabbing and scaring the kids to like, you know, leave my grandson alone. It was, it, it was, it was very touching to see that, you know, the family loves their children, no matter who they are and what they are. So, because a lot of times, you know, you may not always have that in family. So, you know, this comedy is, is gritty, it's funny. And it's, uh, it's, it's realistic and down to earth in that sense. So, you know, it's, it's everyday people, you know, you never, you know, you never know who you're going to meet and who you're going to run into. So I, I enjoyed that episode because at the end of the day, you see that, you know, Mark is not going to let anyone stop him from being who he is. So, and maybe we adults can learn from that. And I think that was the purpose of the episode, you know, <laughs> And it's just, it was a, there's so, there's more to that episode. You wind up seeing Sarah number two, uh, cause you know, throughout the original series, sometimes, uh, excuse me, uh, Becky number two, excuse me. Sometimes, uh, in, in the original series, the original Becky wasn't always there. So they had her backup, Sarah Chalky, who wound up being, who's played, uh, uh, <laughs> I mean that Sarah Chalk is her her name. Uh, she played Becky number two. Uh, Alicia Goinson played the original Becky, and it's just uh, it was it was cool to see her again. Um, she plays the wife who wants Becky to be her surrogate. So it was great to see how Roseanne brought her back into the show as well. So the whole cast is like there, you know, ready to pick up where they left off at, and you know. This character, you know, the, 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 the wife who wants Becky to carry her child, you know, she's very, you know, she's well to do. She's wealthy and she's all about organic this and that. <laughs> it's just, 
And Becky, and she's like, I want to, I want to meet your parents. And then Becky freaks out, like, Oh, let me just show you a picture of them on my phone. She's like, No, I want to meet them. I need to find out if there's any genetic problems that we need to know about, you know, before you conceive. So Becky's nervous about that. So when, you know, her character comes in to meet the Connor family, it's just all laughs because Roseanne just goes at it. And it's just, it's just great to see. It was really a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, Both episodes were great. Glad they're back. They're supposed to be back for one season. If it goes well, they'll do more. I have a feeling it is going to go well. I really do. So I just wanted to talk about that. And uh, when we get back, we're going to talk about Krypton. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hey, welcome back, people. This is Keith. You're listening to Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. And next on our list is Krypton. Yes. This is on the Sci-Fi Network. It debuted last week. And wow, I'm excited about this show. First and foremost, for those of you who have watched uh, the Man of Steel movie that came out years ago with Henry Cavill as Superman, um, one of the things that we got to see with the Superman universe this time was Krypton and looked different. It didn't look like the Krypton from the Superman uh, original movie with Christopher Reeve and Marlon Brando, where it was kind of icy and cold looking. No, you got to see dragons and all kinds of different things. It, it was a whole different type of universe. So this Krypton TV series, basically, you might think it's a prequel, but it's not. It does go back into Superman's home world, uh, Kal-El. He is from the House of El. And it focuses around his grandfather, Seg-El, S-E-G-E-L. So, and where do we, where do I, where do I begin? So basically on Krypton, what you have is that everyone has a house that they come from. And when you're walking around, your family crest is on your clothing. So, and that's how people can identify what house you're from. So we know at this moment in time that S that we look at on earth for Superman's logo it stands for hope, but that's the symbol for the House of Krypton. So in this TV show, Sagel, like I said, is the you know is is Superman's grandfather. Um, his his grandfather, his name is Val El, and he is a is a famous scientist on Krypton, and it's V A L dash E L. He's the patriarch of the family. Um, as a scientist, he has discovered that there is life outside of Krypton. And to speak of this is considered like heresy or blasphemy on Krypton. You're not supposed to say that or believe in that. And this new religion uh, of Rao is on the, is, uh, is rising within the Kryptonian government. And so the Kryptonian government believes that, you know, Krypton is the only planet that exists. So basically what happens is that because Val L, the scientist, uh, has been doing research and he has, you know, he has proof that there's life outside of Krypton, but no one, the, gov- the, the Kryptonian government doesn't want to hear that. They have a trial for him. They find him guilty and they decide to execute him and strip him of his house rank because he refuses to denounce his beliefs, his scientific thoughts and beliefs. So Seg L, as a little boy, and his parents are there at this trial, so they watch 
their patriarch, you know, the, their, you know, his dad's father and his grandfather get executed. And basically, Valel tells his grandson, stay strong and stay with your beliefs. Don't worry about me. You know, stay true to who you are. And before he gets executed, they strip all of them of that S off their chest, which means they'll have no rank on Krypton. And with no rank, that means you're basically considered, you know, lower class or poor class. I hate, I hate even using that word. I hate that word. But for this for this context of the story, to paint the picture, that's what happens. So what happens is like maybe over 10 years later, after he's been executed and they've been stripped of their rank, you see Sega L, uh, you know, in the lower quadrant of of the city of Candor. Candor is the city that they live in. Candor has a lot to do later in Superman universe. It becomes, you know, if you've read those comics, you understand that Candor at one point became, uh, got shrunken down to size and put in a bottle. Um, so it, it was the survive. It was like at one point the last surviving remnant of Krypton uh, after Superman's death, and Superman didn't even know for a long time. So basically, you know, Seg L is uh, running uh, like a, a fighting scam with a friend of his just to make money, just to get by and, and then make do. While his parents are still working and doing their thing, they just don't have any rank. So, and you know, so, so Seg L is kind of lost. He's not sure where he's going to wind up and where he's going to go. And what happens in this first episode is that you see. Uh, that he even though he's not sure of where his life is supposed to go he still has a very strong sense of what is right and what is wrong in regards to how you treat people and sometimes you don't you know sometimes some people may not have empathy for others until they go through similar trials and tribulations and that might have been what happened to Segal or he just might have always had that kind of good heart so this show focuses on the House of L, but it also focuses on, <laughs> wait for it. So, after you see um, Val L get executed and their rank get stripped from them, and you see Seg L with his friend who was running like a fight, a fight club kind of scam to make some money, they cut to a scene, uh, this dark hall or like lecture hall or this dark quarters. It's like a dark gym, let me say that. And you see this woman, uh, she's fighting. Well, she gets chosen to fight and she loses the, the, the fight that she's, and it's combat. It's basically, you find out it's a military, um, it's the Kandorian uh, military. And the head of this military is a woman named Jaina Zod or Jaina Zod. And it's J-A-Y-N-A dash Zod. Yep, folks, you guessed it. House of Zod. So it appears that she is the ancestor of General Zod that we famously know Superman's foil, his uh, foe, <laughs> his very dangerous Kryptonian foe. So you see Jaina uh, and she has been sparring with someone, this other young, this young woman younger than her. And you find out that this young woman that she's sparring with is actually her daughter, Lita Zod. And Lita, you know, wants to impress her mom and she wants to be a great soldier because, you know, they come from a long line of soldiers. And basically what happens is that um, she loses the combat. Uh, she knows she has to get stronger and learn. You find out that she has been bound to a man named Dav, Dev M. Uh, he's a Kryptonian soldier. So on Krypton, the marriages are arranged um, and you get bound to somebody. So you don't really have a say in what the family chooses. And when you have children, they go through birthing chambers. Natural childbirth has been outdated on Krypton. And when they mix your DNA with your with your new spouse, you, um, they can tell you uh, what this child is likely going to be, what kind of position and future they'll have. Very futuristic, very interesting stuff. It's it's a uh, it's so it's so you find out uh, through a chain of events. Uh, some some Kandorian soldiers are coming down to the quarters where Sagal lives, and one soldier starts picking on the older elderly person who's, you know, uh, handicapped for the most part. And Sagal comes to his defense, and he sticks up for him. And when certain people 
from the military or the government see this, uh, he gets he gets chosen to be bound to uh, another one young woman named Nissa Vex, who her father is the man who stripped the elves of their, their of their family rank. So basically, he's bound to her, but he's actually in love with Lita Zod. So there's a whole Romeo and Juliet thing going on. So he's not supposed to have anything to do with her. She's not supposed to have anything to do with him because he has no rank. So they can they can't have a future together, but they're in love. And they're both bound to other people. So the story gets kind of layered and really cool. So all that's going on. But then also, you know, Seg's having to deal with all that. And he pops, he winds up meeting a, a guy named Adam Strange, who's from Earth. And he comes looking for Seg L. And he tells him, hey, um, I'm from Earth. And on that planet, your grandson becomes the greatest superhero the world's ever seen, Superman. And I need your help to make sure that he survives. Someone's come here to wipe out your race. I mean, wipe out your, your bloodline so he won't ever exist. And Segel is like, you know, I mean, what would you, how would you feel if someone told you that? You're like, is this guy on some drugs? What's going on? He can't believe that firsthand. He's just like, this guy sounds crazy. So he tells his parents. And Adam Strange gives Seg, uh, the house of L is this like this crystal that's used to open the fortress of solitude. He shows it to his parents and the father tries to take and say, well, let me take a look at it. You know, don't, don't listen to what he's saying, but I'll take a look and investigate it. And the story just goes from there. I don't want to give away any more, but it's a great story. Um, I'm very happy. So it's, so basically what happens if is, is that if, if Adam strange doesn't help seg L uh, prevent the destruction of, the House of Elves bloodline, Superman may never exist. So like I said, it's not really a prequel because it's kind of in the middle. You're getting the background, but there's future and there's going to be other DC characters popping up in this universe on Krypton. So this is definitely a show you want to watch. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's on the Sci-Fi Network. Uh, check it out. It's a whole new chapter in the Superman saga. So to wrap things up, Krypton airs on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. On the Sci-Fi Network, check it out. Roseanne now airs on Tuesdays at 8, at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You've been listening to Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. I'm your host, Keith. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you had a good time. I know I did. Love everybody out there in the universe on this planet Earth. And I'll see you somewhere out in space.